right guys um thank you so much for joining this week of shine um if you don't know me or i don't know you uh my name is brooke and this week we are going to be continuing in learning about the story of moses moses's life but before we get into our message for this week i just wanted to quick recap what we learned about last week so last week we started we started in exodus chapter one and we really just learned about the beginning of Moses' life when he was a baby. Um, and all the baby boys in Egypt were supposed to be killed, which is terrible. But Pharaoh, who was like the king of Egypt, his daughter rescued Moses. And so that's where Moses' star story starts off. So today we are going to be picking up right where we left off, which will be in Exodus chapter 2, starting in verse 11. So I'm just going to get right into it. There's a lot to read today. Um, and maybe you guys have heard most of the story. Maybe you've heard, today we're going to be talking about the burning bush. And maybe you've heard about that before. Um, but I think that there's really something new that we're all going to get from this today. So really just follow along with me. So like I said, starting in um, verse 11, it says, Many years later, when Moses had grown up, he went out to visit his own people, the Hebrews. And he saw how hard they were forced to work. During his visit, he saw an Egyptian beating one of his fellow Hebrews. After looking in all directions to make sure no one was watching, Moses killed the Egyptian and hid the body in the sand. The next day, when Moses went out to visit his people again, he saw two Hebrew men fighting. Why are you beating up your friend? Moses said to the one who had started the fight. The man replied, Who appointed you to be our prince and judge? Are you going to kill me as you killed that Egyptian yesterday? Then Moses was afraid, thinking everyone knows what I did. And sure enough, Pharaoh heard what had happened, and he tried to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh and went to live in the land of Midian. So, right off the bat, this story is pretty crazy. Um, and so at this point in the story, we know that Moses is 40 years old, and he had been living in Egypt as the prince of Egypt. And so, he also knows that by blood, he's an Israelite. And so when he sees how unfair how unfairly the Egyptians treat the Israelites, he's upset about it, right? And so in his anger, Moses takes matters into his own hands and he murders an Egyptian and then he runs away to save his own life. Um, and I just think something that we can take from this right off the bat is God had a plan to deliver Israel from Egypt, but Moses wanted to take matters into his own hands. He was upset about the situation and so in his anger, he acted out and he made a really bad mistake. Um, even calling murder a mistake seems like not serious enough. It's like really bad mistake. Um, but this can sound a little bit confusing at first because I feel like everyone knows that Moses is a super like righteous man of God. And so hearing about how terribly he messed up is just kind of crazy. Um, but it really just shows us that God will take even the worst situations and even the biz biggest mistakes that people can make and he will use them for good. And so that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. That's exactly what this whole series is about. So for the rest of Exodus chapter 2, um, as we read along in the story, we find out that after Moses flees and runs away to the land of Midian, um, there's this group of girls and they're in danger. And so Moses actually rescues them and their father then invites Moses over to eat with them. And Moses ends up marrying one of the daughters and they have kids together. And that's really all that the Bible tells us about the rest or the next 40 years of Moses' life. We know that he gets married, he has kids, um, and that's really the only details that we get for the rest of Exodus chapter 2. Um, so, so far, recapping the story, we know that Moses spent the first 40 years of his life as the prince of Egypt, right? So he lived in like wealth, really nice life. And now, after one mistake that he made changed his whole life, now he's living as a shepherd in the desert, um, and it doesn't really seem like much is happening for the next 40 years of his life. Um, at least we don't have any details of that in the Bible, um, and I think it's easy to look at that and think, be a little disappointed that we don't necessarily know what's happening in Moses' life, but I think what we do know is that God was using that time, even if it was just ordinary, even if it was uneventful in his life, he was preparing him for the really big things that he had next. Maybe God was using this time to humble Moses. Maybe God was using this time of to allow him to grow closer to God. Um, I know that God was still working and present in Moses' life, even if 
it seemed really ordinary or uneventful. So we're going to pick up in Exodus chapter 3. And so it says, One day Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led the flock far into the wilderness and came to Sinai, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of a bush. Moses stared in amazement. Though the bush was engulfed in flames, it didn't burn up. This is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't that bush burning up? I must go see it. When the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, God called to him from the middle of the bush. Moses, Moses, here I am, Moses replied. Do not come any closer, the Lord warned. Take off your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. When Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. So, here things are really starting to change. Things are really starting to get eventful, right? Because God has appeared to Moses. So, God performed a miracle to get Moses' attention and to display his power to him. Um, so, we all know, like, bushes and trees, that if they catch on fire, like, they're going to burn up, right? Um, but not in this case. God was working a miracle, so he was in this bush, in this fire, but the bush stayed a bush. It didn't burn up. And so obviously Moses looked at this and he was like, this is amazing. I have to see what is going on. So Moses comes closer and God calls out to Moses by name. And Moses says, here I am. God tells Moses that he should take his sandals off because it's kind of like how when you go to like a friend's house or a really nice house, you're going to take your shoes off when you get inside because you don't want to like bring your dirty shoes into a nice house. It's kind of just like a sign of respect, a sign of honor. And here Moses was standing in the presence of God, the holy presence of God. And so as respect and honor to God, he takes his sandals off because he's standing on holy ground. And then we read that Moses was afraid and he hides his face from God. And this is because standing in the presence of the Lord, he recognizes that he is a sinner, that he isn't worthy to be standing in the holy presence of the Lord. And so he responds to that with humbleness and with reverence to who God is. Um, so then, in the next verses, it's God reminds Moses that he's the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And when God says this to Moses, he's reminding him that he is a God of the promises. That God kept all of his promises to Abraham, he kept all of his promises to Isaac, all of them to Jacob, and he will continue to keep his promises to Moses. And God is about to make a big promise to Moses. So then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I am aware of their suffering. So I've come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile and spacious land. It is a land flowing with milk and honey, the land where the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites now live. Look, the cry of my people of Israel has reached me. I have seen how harshly the Egyptians abuse them. Now go, for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people out of Egypt. And so that's where we're going to end the Bible story for right now in Exodus chapter 3 verse 10. So here, God is giving a big calling to Moses' life. He's giving him a huge purpose. Um... He's saying that I have heard the cries of my people Israel. I know that they are in distress, but I'm going to rescue them. And Moses, I'm going to do it through you. And this is amazing because we just read about this huge mistake, one of the worst mistakes that you can make. And Moses made it. And now God is saying that I'm going to take all of that. I'm going to take every mistake that you've made, every doubt that you have about yourself. And I'm going to use all of that for this amazing plan. I'm going to use it all for my glory and for good. And that's exactly what this message is about. This is exactly what this whole series is about. The main point for today is that God can take our messes and turn them into miracles. It's exactly what he did in Moses' life. That's exactly what he wants to do in every single one of our lives. No mistake is outside of God's forgiveness or God's goodness. But when we find ourselves in the midst of a mess, whether it's a mess that we created like Moses, or it's maybe one that's outside of our control, we know that we can trust God to help us out of it. But I also know what it's like to be stuck in the middle of a mess, and even when we know that God is good, it still feels like there's no way out of it. I think maybe we've all been there at some point. I'm sure Moses felt the same way when he made his mistake. I really messed up this time. How could I ever come back from this? 
So I want to give you guys some things that you can do maybe when you're feeling that way, maybe when you're feeling stuck in the middle of a mess. Um, so point number one, or thing number one to do when you're in a mess is to remember who you are. And right now, the world is going to always be trying to tell you who to be, and I completely understand that as you're growing up and you're trying to figure yourself out, and then you have all these voices in the world telling you to act this way if you want to be cool or do these things and hang out with these people if you want to feel accepted and feel satisfied. Um, the world's really going to try to tell you what you need. It's going to try to tell you who you are. But the thing is, is we have to listen to the God who created us to know who we are. God created you for a purpose and for a plan and we have to listen to what he says about us. So. God says that you are not your mistakes. You are not a failure. A failure. You are not only worth what you can offer or what you can bring to the table, but God says that you are loved. He says you are forgiven and you are set free. And the word of God also says that he loved you so much that he sent his son Jesus so that we can be set free and live with him eternally. That is where your value comes from. And so when you're stuck, when you're feeling down on yourself, when you've made mistakes, Cling to who God says that you are. Remember who you are in Jesus. The next thing is don't isolate from yourself from God or from others. And I think a really great way to paint this picture is, um, say, I'm sure a lot of you guys play sports or maybe you have siblings that play sports so you know how a sports game goes. Maybe if you get injured, you hurt your leg playing soccer or football or something, and you're on the ground, it's really hard to get back up when there's no one to help you. So a lot of times when someone gets injured in a sports game, like their coaches or their friends will come around them and pick them up and carry them off the field. Because it's really hard to do that when you're hurt and when you fall down, it's hard to get back up on your own. Satan wants you to be alone. He wants you to be isolated because when you fall down, it'll be a lot easier for you to stay down when there's no one to help you get back up. We can turn to God and be honest with him about our mistakes and he will always help you back up. Not only that, but even at church, you have a community of people who are there for you, who are going to help you. So when we make mistakes, don't run away from people. Don't isolate yourself from God or from people. They're there to help you. So reach out to them. The next thing is that the Holy Spirit is pursuing you. God never gave up on Moses, even in his worst mistakes. So be listening and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. Um, in order for God's will and God's plan to be done in your life, you have to be willing to obey his leadership. So, read the word of God, follow what it says, know that the Holy Spirit is always with you and there to help you no matter what you go through. And the last thing that I want to leave you guys with is to pray and to pursue God. And so we just got out of a series that was all about prayer, and so I'm sure you guys all know, or have heard the importance of prayer, how helpful it is, um... I think it's such a blessing that we have just like 24 7 access to God we can talk to him whenever we want however we want um he couldn't have made it easier for us to communicate with him really and so when we make mistakes we don't want to run and hide from them like Moses did when Moses made a mistake he fleed from it what we want to do is turn to God work through it in prayer and in God's presence and we will always become better people because of it God uses the mistakes we make he uses the difficulties in our life to make us better people. So, hopefully that that was encouraging to you guys. Um, you took something from that. I know this was a really encouraging thing for me to hear the story of Moses, to hear about how God took someone who messed up so badly and did such incredible things through him. That's true for each and every one of us. So remember that you're loved. Remember that God has a plan for you. And remember that even when we make mistakes, we can still turn to God he will help us, and he will use each and everything for good. So I hope you guys have a really great week. I'll be praying for all of you guys, and hope to see you next week back here at Shine.